Hello, 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 and welcome to the Drag Race Recap here on Reality TV Rehap Ups. I'm your host, Liana Boris, and we are here to talk about episode four of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars season eight. We have a full panel here for you today. First, let me welcome in a woman who did not join us last week, but is definitely here this week. Will give us all her thoughts. It is Beth Dixon. Beth, how are you? I'm doing great. Last week, I was um, putting on what I like to call my best Liana um, cosplay because I got to <laughs> impersonate someone who had a doctorate and I was wearing doctoral <laughs> robes and a hood that didn't belong to my at least my master's. So I was really feeling the energy. I was like, oh, I didn't even have to do all the hard work here i am oh my gosh um, you cracked so the code <laughs> i cracked the code and then this week i'm actually wearing my keep calm and sashay away yes. first yes. t-shirt um in honor of coming back to the drag race uh uh uh, podcast, but I'm happy to be back and happy to discuss this episode with my two favorite people to discuss yes. drag race with. Perfect. Well, speaking of Beth's other favorite person, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amon Adwin. Amon, how are you? I'm well. It's a beautiful Sunday. The weather is nice. I'm going to go to a brunch with some friends. We're going to go see Holly Bailey as Ariel and the Little Mermaid. It's just the perfect Memorial Day weekend. I'm having a great time, but Lovely. also always happy to discuss drag race as well so Ugh, amazing good yes well let's kick off your fabulous sunday by doing something that we're all super excited to do and that is talk about jimbo's second win darian getting eliminated a i guess scripted like the queens had to write comedy series that we mm -hmm. have to talk about today so beth first i want to kick things off with you is there anything that you wanted to say from last week that you feel like wasn't covered no, I mean, I was I was thankful. First of all, I, I told you guys this before we went, we started recording. I thought you guys handled that not handled <laughs> without my presence. You handled it so well. <laughs> You're a mess without me. <laughs> it, was so, it was so awful. No, no, um, no, no, no. I, I felt like everything was covered really well last week. And, you know, obviously last week was a pretty sad episode for me because Kasha Davis is like, mm, oh, and now I have back to back with Dana. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> Double <laughs> whammy. I loved in Darian's um, Untuck where she was like, maybe if I hurry, I could catch a ride back with yeah. Tasha. Because <laughs> I was like, that's no easy hike. She's got to do LAX, likely to JFK, mm -hmm. likely to Rochester, you know, so mm -hmm. that's not fun. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I thought last week, uh, I think the right person went home, was confused about the top ratings. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think that that was a shared opinion across the board. So yeah. no. mm -hmm. Well, was this week any less or more confusing for you? Um, uh, it was pretty confusing. I'm not going to lie. I, this is, I have thoughts. We will definitely mm. get into mm. them, but I, I think that there's, there's a lot to unpack with the judging generally on the show, especially mm -hmm. for all-star seasons and when mm -hmm. you have the social strategy in there, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> well, Amon, what about you? General vibes on this episode. Were you feeling it or no? Um, I mean, I, I I liked it for the most part. Um, I like that Heidi is seemingly bringing a little bit of some some kind of drama. I don't know what she's got under her sleeve, but something's gonna happen with her. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I um I, I I liked it. This season continues to be the season of titties. Like it's just like we cannot escape them. Like they're just everywhere this season. Um, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, but I, um, I, I mean, I feel like the win was sort of like, uh, it was like fine, I guess that's fine. Mm -hmm. I also wouldn't have been opposed to another team winning. So I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't think it was like as like weird as last week. So I'm like, you know, tempering mm -hmm. myself a little bit, but I was still like, okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. So... This week was an interesting one. I think I echo a lot of what the two of you have said. For me, I would say the beginning of the episode was super fun. I mm -hmm. like the concept of the challenge. I love seeing the queens interact together in the workroom. That's just always the best part. Your casting was splitting fantastic. into teams was fun. <laughs> exactly. Yes, exactly. We love a good bump from the pit crew. Although so not like, the not the unintentional racial segregation though. Like with all the black I together, saw the whites, and then the two Latin queens with Jimbo. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> Is there something about Jimbo we don't know? Uh <laughs> Yeah, which is seemingly random, right? We get the popping of the balloons. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, I felt like this episode had sort of all the pieces for something that would be really fun. But then once we got to the actually seeing the 
commercials for the shows Mm -hmm. and pretty much everything else after that i was like what is happening i'm really not vibing so i sort of had really opposite opinions the first part of the episode i thought was really fun the second part of the episode was very bizarre and i these queens are funny i know they can do better so i'm like did you guys not have enough time was there something weird with the brief like what happened i think the brief is the issue okay Okay, so let's, yeah, so let's, here's what they were told, okay? Yeah. The queens were told, it's the golden age of television, we, you need to create trailers, trailers, for a sickening scripted series starring you. It's essentially a commercial for your show, you can choose any genre, uh, it's must-she TV. So Beth, mm-hmm. what do you think was wrong here? Two major things, okay? The brief says, trailers, not yes. An entire summation of the entire show yeah. within two Which, minutes. Which, to be fair, a lot of trailers end up doing that nowadays anyway. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. But I would say for, like, TV, like, you're normally getting, like, what's going to happen in the first couple of episodes rather than, mm-hmm. like, what happens over the entirety of the series, right? Mm-hmm. Only one team did that, and that team was the bottom team. <laughs> so I was, like, confused there. Number two, it can be any genre, so why are we judging whether or not it's funny if they're trying to do something that may have some comedic aspects to it? If the brief was, it has to be True. funny, but you can choose any genre. So if you want to make a funny horror, a funny drama, something that is like, you know, tongue in cheek or something like that, that's fine. So I guess like, I think it's obvious, like, I'm not going to sit back and pretend like drag race is supposed to be a serious thing and like i think it's implied that anything that's on drag race is going to be campy and funny and those kind of things but i also just kind of felt like (laughs) i don't know i there were some people who did choices that i don't think were funny and got Mm -hmm. laughs for it um and then there were people who did something that i thought was more within the realm of what the assignment was and they got dinged on it from a variety of groups so that's why i'm confused i don't think the judges understood the brief that they gave Mm. that's what i think it is yeah that's that's fair i didn't even really think about um it being them being allowed to do any type of genre kind of just automatically just assumed you know can't be funny whatever um but that's that's fair because it makes it that much harder to compare all of the trailers because it's like what are like what is the benchmark you know what i mean right but then again i think because of the fact that they obviously all of them went the comedy route um through the choices that they made that's sort of like what you know that's what rupaul and the rest of the judges i guess decided to to base it off of and then on top of that when you have like the bottom team like queens that are known for being on the more comedic side like darian lake and james mansfield it's sort of like okay well i know that you guys are capable of doing something so hey but this challenge made me really start wanting to defend the writers that we get for some of these skits on <laughs> Drag Race. Because I was just like, <laughs> if I had to choose between that and what they gave, then. <laughs> Amon uh, became a really staunch member or like uh, like protector and ally of the yes, WGA. The writer's <laughs> strike, yes. I was like, come on, pay them what they're due. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I oh boy. I mean, I think about so when I watch them, the three skits, right, or the commercials, whatever you want to call it. I I also was like, I think I'm supposed to be laughing because Heidi, you hear a lot of like H- Heidi says it needs to make sense make it funny, you know, make it funny, make it funny. Like I heard that a lot in terms of what I, as the audience member was supposed to think. So yeah. that's why Beth, like when you bring up, Oh, well it was never explicitly said that it was supposed to be funny. Like, Oh yeah, you're right. I look back at the language. That's not there anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's just pick whatever genre you want. If you want to make something serious, that wasn't explicitly stated that you couldn't do that. Right. So yeah, I do think it kind of falls apart a little bit there. But also to Amon's point, they all chose something funny. And like, I only really yeah. laughed at Heidi's and Lala's being just stupid. Not because yeah, I understood it or that, that it made sense or <laughs> yeah. that the writing was good, but just because I thought it was silly and stupid and ridiculous. So then it was like, oh my God, how do I even compare this? Because then I guess based on funny, like I would have put that them in the top, not safe. So, uh, yeah, it, it was just, it felt very confusing as an audience member because I didn't know how I was supposed to feel yeah. through watching these skits. I guess it, you know, the, the narrative that we ended up, you know, being fed was, it wasn't so much just about the comedy of it all. It was about it having to make sense because we see all mm. of the, we see the, um, the conversation between Alexis and 
uh, Darian about like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just worried that this is not going, is a little bit too convoluted. Are we going mm -hmm. to be able to get the message across in a clear and succinct way that's going to make sense? And then like you said, with Heidi talking about it needs to make sense. Like, I, I guess that like that's like mm -hmm. the narrative that we're supposed to be talking about. It's like, can you give us a clear, <clears throat> excuse me, a clear and simple concept it's gonna, we're, we're gonna be able to understand what's on the, what, what we're watching. And then ultimately, when we see who ends up winning, RuPaul does say, you know, we got it instantly. It's supposed to be Mean Girls. It's a trope. Like, I, we got it. It's Mean Girls. The other and, one, and I was yeah. like, but my favorite thing about that is that Jimbo was the one who said, it doesn't need to make sense. We just need to be funny. <laughs> yeah, <true>. So, like, <laughs> the winning teams, the whole, like, like, you, I don't know. You had Jimbo and Candy going at it. And I, maybe that's what ended up making it work was that Jimbo was able to bring the kind of like ridiculous over the top character um, yeah. and you know <laughs> clearly <laughs> Jessica and Candy were doing that Michelle was very worried about whether or not we'd be able to air this at all <laughs> um, but I think that you know what they were going for was okay what is the simple concept that we can that has been done before and I actually think that's kind of meta because that's we say the golden age of television, but how many like cop shows do we have on CBS? Like how many like, <laughs> you know, of the same show do we have all over? Like, we have like a real yeah. housewives of every city and county in this country. Right. Uh -huh. So we we like something and then we run with it in 50,000 different. Like, how many drag race franchises are there? Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. So I do think that that was an effective way to do it. I know that. Lost is not a show that everybody has seen, but if you have seen Lost, that was very clearly well done mm -hmm. that for a concept. So I'm interested, have either of you not seen Lost and don't really know what's going on with it? I've, I've seen Lost. Lost. I've you, seen it. And Amon, you haven't, you said? Mm -mm -mm. So I'm, I, I'm interested to know, like, for someone who hasn't seen Lost, did the concept come across well for you? Like, did you understand like what they were trying to go for? Uh, yeah, I got it. Like, I, I, I really thought that Darian's idea was very intriguing. Like, they said it was Lost, and what was the other reference that they said that it was like? It, uh, it pretty much was Lost, and then just like instead of the others, it was like let's throw in quote unquote dead celebrities. Dead celebrities. I really, I really enjoyed that. I was like, I kind of want this to be an actual like thriller movie like a bunch of like dead celebrities like just partying together on an island and then you try to come and then like when they secret i thought was like really fun and intriguing um mm -hmm. the the execution of it i mean it was it was okay i definitely didn't really laugh mm -hmm. a lot but like i was ex what, yeah. the one thing that i was excited about was just seeing which dead celebrities they were going to choose and like <laughs> yeah. which ones were going to make an appearance so mm -hmm. i definitely i think i was definitely the most invested i guess intellectually speaking in that concept more so than the other ones mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. And Liana is somebody who has watched. Uh, so I haven't finished Lost. I'm actually in the middle of like season four. So please don't spoil the ending anybody for me. Um, <laughs> I used to have a podcast with Dylan Zayner where we literally talked about Lost. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, Liana is somebody who has watched Lost. Like, I thought that there were nice like little nuggets of things that were clearly homages to the show. But I didn't think you like I thought that they were like extras. They didn't need them. So again, I, I think for me, I it. In all of them, I got the concept. Mm -hmm. Like, I understood what was going on, I think, in all of them. So right. for me, what I would judge on is not based on a lack of understanding. Like, I understood what every single group was doing. The Bumbling Fools, the mm -hmm. Mean Girls Meets Carrie, the Lost thing. I mean, I've seen those, so it also mm -hmm. helped. But I think what I would take away from is just the the way that everything was too long <laughs> Or yeah. not enough, like every right. single one. So we'll go through. So for theirs in particular, I felt like it. You're too. It's spending too long. You're spending too long on these certain things. You need to move through these yeah. beats or have jokes or something yeah. that makes it more interesting. It just felt like it dragged so much for theirs specifically. Not yeah. that I didn't understand the concept. So I think I that's fair. That that was sort of my main critique for them. And I don't know if that's something that would have been in the storyboarding. They didn't have enough time to go through yeah. more scenes with the record, you know, the actual filming of it. They didn't have enough time. So like, that's why I'm saying that and because all of them, I think suffered from this, yeah. this mm -hmm. sort of misplaced timing yeah. of the three minutes that they had. So that's why I think that it really is, yeah, something in the, that they needed an extra day or something. I don't know. Just something to get those beats yeah. down because it just all felt like off. See, but, for me, I felt mm -hmm. like the, 
the Heidi, Kahana, and Lala group needed way more substance. And yes. like, I just sat back and I was kind of like, I this seems more like a sketch than it does a trailer. Mm -hmm. And I felt like for the high school group, it felt like here's a completed idea of a movie, but not a TV show. Like, how do you continue that as a series? Mm -hmm. And I felt like the Darien Lake, mm -hmm. James and uh, Alexis group was the only one that gave me TV trailer. Mm -hmm. So I think that for me, it just was really confusing. Like you said, Liana, like, I just think that there's like a lack of something in the production um, that made it hard to judge. So when I'm hearing the judges say, oh, it was just a really complicated thing and we really couldn't understand it. I was like, I don't think that's what you're really trying to say. I think mm -hmm. what you're trying to do is cover up for like the other you groups. Send, <laughs> just say you want to send Darian like home. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Just say it. Exactly. Darian, Let's we just... love you, but it's time mm -hmm. for you to go home. Okay? Yeah. Like... <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. L well, let's go through all of them because yeah, to be honest, I don't even know who I would put in the top and bottom because I thought That's they were all I've... bad. <laughs> so like, mm, it's really splitting hairs, but in like the worst for the worst, not for the, like the best, but mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. yeah, let's, let's start with team green. So this was Lala, Kahana and Heidi. And as we've already sort of touched on, they did horror but Heidi says you know make it funny so they do run queen run and they come up with the concept of like two idiots trying to take down Kahana's character who was a successful drag queen I guess I don't I know she got yeah. her power from her tucking panties and then yeah. that ends up like being a whole thing so Aman what how did you feel about this one for their skit I just laughed at Lala and Heidi yes. just being stupid. Like yes. I just the 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 voice that Lala in particular was using was just like Fat Albert. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> um and then when you have the two of them right next to Kahana, I'm like Kahana, like I thought I thought Kahana was gonna be in the bottom because I was just mm -hmm. like, I don't she's lucky that they were being judged as teams because <sighs> what were you doing sis and then she knew like in an untucked she was like I, you guys really like pulled me through <laughs> was like, mm -hmm. I, I know that i'm not an actress but i you know i gave him my all so um i thought that the concept was very loose um <laughs> but yeah like them talking pennies but um i you know they i mean at least i chuckled with mm -hmm. what was going on you know yeah. what i mean so the the physical comedy was so good mm -hmm. um I feel like all three groups depended on different things, right? Which kind of went with what their shows were going to be. And that's what set it up. So this was mm -hmm. definitely the physical comedy group. And it it's hard to be, you know, the straight man character. So I give that to Kahana. Like if yeah. everybody else around you is acting weird and your job is to like mm -hmm. not be, um, you still got to stand out. And that's why I always say some of the best comedians don't take the like obvious physical comedy route. They take the straight man route because anybody who's really good can like, your eyebrows can tell a story if you're the straight person, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's so weird to call it the straight man in a queer show like this, but here <laughs> we are. Um, I just, I I really think, like you said, Aman, Khan is really lucky that mm -hmm. they did it by teams, and Darian's really not lucky that they did it by teams, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. essentially. Um, but I felt like with this one... <laughs> I didn't like the concept that much. I just, mm -hmm. I mean, all I did was like laugh at how horrible the makeup and hair and the facial expressions and such were. And that was great. It gave me a lot of like Asia O'Hara with like the ugly, like butter face mm -hmm. thing that she did in season 10. And which slayed me then, it slays me now. We know how to get a, Beth, a chuckle out of Beth. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, as a, as a TV show trailer, I'm just going to mm. keep going back to that because I have to kind of like judge my thoughts off of it. I just generally felt like this was the weakest in, turn of, in terms of an actual trailer for a TV show. Um, but I felt like it was the strongest in terms of illicit laughter. I, don't yeah, know. I mean, they, they yeah. pretty much told the entire story in the trailer. So. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, that's actually that's a great point because one I yeah I was getting more like movie than TV show if you were gonna put them in buckets but also yeah it was the one that made me laugh the most but probably on paper it was the weakest mm -hmm. because I think but I, I think there was so much potential with it because yeah. I think you have to set it up like these two like Heidi and Lala are oh my god they are the most fearful 
you know, like bounty hunter, whatever you want to sell it as, and then have the reveal that they're actually like bumbling idiots. But instead they jumped right into them being bumbling idiots. And I wanted that to be like the big gag at, you know, minute 30 or whatever. That's the reveal that they're actually stupid and are easily defeated. So like, Mm -hmm. yeah. And it also did feel like they had told the whole story. So I think while I was the most, I laughed the most at theirs, I thought it had so much potential, but like actually watching it, it was like, just the same scene over and over and over again, just with the bumbling idiots messing up in different ways, right? Yeah. <laughs> there was nothing like particularly unique about it. And then the whole panties thing made no sense. I was just like, <laughs> like okay. <what? laughs> and and I was like, like, is this a TV show? Like, does this happen every week? Is this like house where you have the same thing every week? Like where Kahana ends up defeating like them with her tucking panties? I don't know. <laughs> like, I got, I get that, you know... <laughs> cartoons are able to get away with that right like how many times mm-hmm. have we seen wiley e. coyote get like right. hit by an anvil or something tom like and that? jerry and tom and mm-hmm. jerry and like all those different kinds of things right and so it's not out of the realm of possibility for this to be something like every single week she's gonna <laughs> you know outsmart them although it's not hard and i think that that's the the issue here is that, like they're they have to be able to show that they're good at something mm. there has to be some kind of conflict right if the conflict <laughs> is just two idiots can't seem to get away like that's not funny like the reason <laughs> like the reason why you know tom for tom and jerry is so entertaining is because tom actually comes up with really interesting ideas it's just that and Jerry's, he catches jerry sometimes and he catches mm-hmm. jerry sometimes and like the reason why wiley e. coyote is so interesting because the coyote is able to come up with you know rely on the predatory instincts that that you know animal has Mm. it's just like when you have two people who can't even function trying to do something i was just like i need a little bit more like give them a little bit more dimension so that we can get an idea of a tv show but i guess it was funny too because they weren't even just like the home alone bumbling idiots <laughs> yeah. level. Yeah. they were like makeup smeared all over yeah. like, just stumbling over each other it's like so not good. capable functioning at all which is what made it funny but also right. yeah provides no conflict so that's where it's like okay you look back at the brief and you say okay make a trailer for a tv show this is not a trailer for a tv show but i did laugh the most yeah. <laughs> so what, what this do I would do? have been great in the snl sketch like two yeah. like weeks ago you know mm-hmm. like this would have been a right. great sketch <laughs> Exactly. Okay, let's talk about the next team. Let's talk about Candy, Jessica, and Jimbo. So they had also, I don't know what it was about this like horror thing that was going around the uh, the workroom, but they also had the idea for this thriller moment. But in their initial discussions, Beth, you had mentioned this, there was already a lot of conflict between Jimbo and yeah. Candy. Yeah, uh, it seems like Jimbo just wanted jokes and Candy wanted structure. Um, which is funny to me because I would have felt like based off of their impressions of the seasons they've been on, it would have mm-hmm. been flipped around. Like, I feel like Candy would have been like, let's just go out there and like, ma, you know, wing it, whatever. Have, mm-hmm. have a good time. It'd just be funny. Um, and then I like that Jessica was just basically like, <laughs> por favor. <laughs> por favor. Oh my God. Jessica's so funny. <laughs> like, I'm like professionals. I'm living for her. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I like that I like that they didn't rely on making jokes about like the obvious things with each of them as the starring characters. I think that if this were like season three, it would have been like, isn't it funny? Jessica can't speak English. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like they would have had to rely on that. And I'm really happy that like, that's not the direction they went with this. You know, isn't it funny that Candy's a bigger person and blah, blah, blah. I like that. They just like Mm -hmm. were able to give us more dimension in that way and be like, okay, now we're going to be the character that everybody has seen, you know, the, the popular girls mm-hmm. who are really slutty and all that kind of stuff. And then the girl who really wants to be with them. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just, I just felt like, again, this didn't seem like a TV series. Like what's going to happen after this one episode? I mean, yeah, she, she killed them. <laughs> the, the main yeah. characters are dead. Like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, it was, it was fine. I think it definitely like, at least the way in which it was edited, it definitely appeared to be sort of like, like the most like linear type mm-hmm. of like story mm-hmm. um but yeah I, I i take that critique it's just it it didn't really a, a trailer per se it was just well it was but i mean what what's next like is it the same thing as like what we talked about the, the last thing where it just happens over and over and over again uh, jimbo i mean her performance was 
fine for what it was. I feel like she was really aided by the fact that hers was the carry, the, the the carry and the crazy character. Like she could really like take it all the way more so than maybe some of the other characters could. So I think that that really helped. Um, I don't know what I'm thinking really hard about it. I'm like maybe maybe she did deserve the win because I'm thinking about all everyone else's portrayal in there in their trailers and i'm like did anyone else really like give a i mean i don't know i mean heidi and lala i mean i could have been fine with either of them winning like Mm -hmm. yeah so i don't know it was like i said before i was like okay i guess like yeah right (laughs) if the tv show was setting up so that for the rest of the series it's about jimbo's character running the school like now she's the like the popular girl great mm-hmm. but the whole point was like the other two characters are supposed to be main characters and if they're mm-hmm. dead in the first episode so i know i know i'm being really like and there's a lot of bias coming from me because obviously i i love like alexis james and darian on the other mm-hmm. one but i don't know i just when i look at the brief you know i'm i'm from the world of academia if somebody gives me a rubric i want to i want to play to the rubric mm-hmm. right follow um, that syllabus honey yeah exactly <laughs> I I I think in terms of the overall structure it was maybe a little bit simpler than like the Darian James Alexis group oh, sure, which yeah. makes it easier to follow if you're not like familiar with with anything um and I think it had all of the basic ingredients I think if you cut out yeah. the reveal that she's murdered them at the end then it does feel a little bit more like a trailer instead of the whole mm-hmm you know, the whole shebang that then it's about this conflict of, you know, setting up Jimbo's character as this like, you know, potential murder or devious, whatever in some way. So, cause you kind of have to do that, like at least in the first episode, set up this initial conflict. And then that's the conflict that'll persist, persist right. throughout the rest of the season. So I think if you'd cut that, I think it actually would have been fine or maybe more mm-hmm. of like, instead of Jimbo murdering them, more of like Jimbo in the background, like watching them or like yeah. plotting a, their yeah. demise. Having a shrine to them. Like yes, it's one of those things exactly. where it's like, I want to be a part of them and I will do whatever it takes. Right. You know, exactly. like that kind of so I think that there were probably, if I'm comparing like, let's say the first group, Heidi and Lala and Kahanas to this group, I would say less tweaks to make it fit the brief. And so yeah. based on that, I'm going to say it was better. Mm-hmm. I definitely didn't laugh as much, but there was also like less stupid. And I think a lot of their jokes were probably cut because they were like, well, we can't show douching. We're not going to show <laughs> you know, whatever. Like there was like this whole list of things that it seemingly they cut because Michelle was like standards and practices is not <laughs> this slide. I was this was on Paramount Plus. So, I mean, yeah. you can do anything on the internet. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was like, yeah. release the uncut version. Yeah. I want to see the dirty version of this. I just love the line that somebody said, and I think it was Candy. It was like, um, you know what's we're we're too much if Michelle Visage is saying <laughs> she's like, um, we can't have the bottle under your skirt. You know, we can't wait, like and she's like, you can't pull the lipstick out of her asshole. So she turns, <laughs> she's not out of her vagina. <laughs> I was done. That was funnier to me than the actual um, Yeah, right. You know, exactly. So that's what like I had in the back of my mind is I was like, well, maybe those were the jokes. And so the right. jokes just couldn't make it on tv which is unfortunate but also if you talked about it in the record like they yeah. showed stuff in the filming of it so right. i mean well. maybe, like just let them do it and then if it has to get cut or film two versions right like let them mm-hmm. do the jokes and then standards and practices can make up their mind about whether or not they think it can be included you know what not. maybe it's better that they didn't because we already got all these hoes coming for drag queens lately and about how they're just like <laughs> deviants and shit so maybe maybe oh this was God. the way to go <laughs> oh man oh, yeah God. exactly maybe ultimately at the end i i think um i think in terms of jimbo you know jimbo does end up winning and i think in terms of her performance i i would say fine i didn't necessarily mm-hmm. have any qualms with it uh, it was giving me a little bit of like it's my special sure day, day. <laughs> <laughs> from drag race canada which i was like oh maybe rupaul hasn't seen this so maybe jimbo should just like do that again <laughs> you know it worked the first time uh, so I, you know, I can't, I can't take that away from Jimbo. I, I don't think that that mm-hmm. was unnecessarily unfair, but you know, again, none of these really like stood off the page for me in terms of like, oh yeah, they really nailed it. Yeah. Right. 
Well, let's talk about the last team who ultimately all three of them are up for elimination. It's Darian, James, and Alexis. Amon, what would you say now that we're getting into some of the details here about this particular performance? Um, I'm like having a hard time even remembering. And I watched the episode twice and I'm having a hard time remembering like what exactly happened in the sketch. I'm like, I know that Elvis made an appearance. Marilyn Monroe made an appearance. <laughs> they needed yeah. to keep the secret. Um, they were on a booze cruise at first. I remember all of that. Um, but I don't remember really laughing at anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I just remember the general concept of it. So yeah. I guess now that I'm really thinking about it, I guess you can see this is the weakest, but it's just so mm-hmm. hard when there are so many holes to poke in all the other ones too. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I actually felt like they had some of the best written jokes, like actual intellectual funny. Well, I should say I, they're not intellectual, but like in the way that they didn't rely on like, like it's more body. So wit than physical. Yeah. Body. Wit. Yeah. There mm-hmm. you go. Like, um, I I actually did laugh quite a bit at Darian going Obama like that to me was oh yeah that was funny that was funny um and I also liked when there was the other joke that she said that I thought was really stupidly funny I felt like Darian in my opinion should have been in the top if it was individually judged Mm. I thought I laughed more at her and again I understand I have a bias so maybe it's just because I like her brand of comedy um but I'm I'm also just a little upset too because I'm like. Ugh. we yeah. didn't get Darian's reads you know she's one of the best readers in the whole game we didn't get her on snatch games she had one mm. of the best snatch games in her season which was already a stacked cast of good snatch games I'm like ah we were really ripped off uh, it really yeah it, it feels very much like her story was way too short on the season yeah mm-hmm. so I guess maybe there's a lot of those emotions in play with it but when I literally watched it I saw it back and I was like first of all I like Lost it's a lot of fun so I was enjoying the concept I and it was the first one that we watched and I was like oh okay clear concept to me I, it's a booze cruise instead of a plane um, the others are quote unquote dead celebrities and they're trying to kill these three because they can't trust them to keep the secret if they get off the island and you have three different characters I, I'm do you love James, but I definitely felt like James was really weak in this sketch. Yeah, she was, um, yeah. And Alexis was taker or lever. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't think that she was outrageously amazing, and I love Alexis, and I live for the TV drama she gives, which we'll get into, but, like, <laughs> I I can also appreciate them being in the bottom purely because two out of the three didn't really have strong performances, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. but it's just too bad that the person who did have are definitely the strongest performance out of this group, and in my opinion, one of the strongest performances out of all the queens was the one who went home. That, I think, sours it all for me, too. The judges describe the sketch as pleasant, right? Like, it wasn't funny overall. It was pleasant. Mm-hmm. And I kind of get that. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I thought that, again, I, I echo what you're saying about, like, the they had jokes. They had, a you know, the island sitting on a secret. They had yeah. these sort of, like, little references that were written in there that were clearly inserted into their performance and into the, the trailer. But I just felt like even, okay, so they had to crash on the boat, right? So they're on mm-hmm. the boat and, mm-hmm. you know, stuff's going. And it just took forever to, like, yeah. get them. Cr- I was yeah. like, crash now. And then they're like... Ah, like on the beat and I'm like okay 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 like I want to get to kind of like the cool fun part of it and so then by the time they got there that was a little rushed because it was like we're just finding jewels all over but there was like mm-hmm. no setup for what does yeah. this mean you know oh my gosh what's going on da, da. so then it felt like the cool part of their concept was rushed a little bit because yeah. they had like dragged out other parts of it and even those were a little bit too long so I, I like I said I just think that the timing was was very bizarre on the whole thing and if if you're there and you're recording right okay so you're filming this and james says which was maybe laugh made me laugh harder than anything in their actual sketch that michelle's laughing like a coma victim cough yeah (laughs) (laughs) like that's funny that made me laugh Mm -hmm. and then it's like oh god you kind of know like that it's not going (laughs) well how do you pivot and like can you change there's nothing really you can do and that must be a really disheartening feeling so i don't know if that was also they were kind of getting into their own heads about like 
Michelle's not reacting well. Michelle's not reacting well. Like, uh, and then you kind of get nervous and then that sort of stifles the whole thing. So I also wonder Plus, if Alexis a wasn't a thousand percent in on the whole concept, which is already right. going to take somebody out of it, you know? Um, so yeah. I, I definitely agree with all of that. I, I'm not sitting here pretending it was like the best sketch of all time, you know? Yeah. Um, but in terms of fitting the brief, I thought it did the best job. And I definitely laughed more at Darian in particular than mm -hmm. I did. Um, I, I didn't really laugh at Jimbo. I liked yeah. her. Yeah. I think yeah. that she did great, but I don't know. Well, uh, that was the other thing too. It wasn't just that because, okay, so... Alexis was not in on the concept. Mm -hmm. James had voted for Darian twice, <laughs> becomes a third time. So, you know, I don't know if they like also just didn't vibe together as a team because I think yeah. that's what Kahana, Lala, and Candy or and um, Heidi had going for them is that they clearly all were just interacting and playing off of each other well. And that sort mm -hmm. of brings up the energy and the feeling of that whole sketch. So mm -hmm. I don't know if there was like some underlying tension that maybe made things feel a little bit more awkward but yeah and i want to like again because you know i'm going to anyway because like this is like my last opportunity to really give darian roses but i love that um she's saying i feel like so many concepts have already been done on this mm -hmm. show and i wanted mm -hmm. to do something really different and out there and james was all in on it and mm -hmm. alexis wasn't and i think that that's fine but i definitely love that she went for something that isn't the expected joke yeah take the risk I, yeah and i really like what i think of the golden age of television like we're not in it right now like we were in it like 10 years ago so we're like not in it right now so i think of shows like lost desperate housewives like desperate housewives would have been so good for someone to parody mm -hmm. um but like oh no now your husband's dead what do we do like i mean that would have been so stupidly fun mm -hmm. um but I just I think about those shows that like really were like the epitome, like ABC at its highest, <laughs> um, <laughs> like like the epitome of, of those television shows. And I love that she went for something that's not overly queer or feminine and actually lost as a show it has a huge issue with like being so male centric and the female characters are just like not as interesting or given as many opportunities to do cool things in the show Why? so yeah. i i don't and that's not the purpose of what dairy was trying to do i know that but i appreciate it like okay let's take this concept but like make it about you know three bimbos on a boat mm. um yeah i mean because it's i mean it's always like we know what types of things work on the right. show so it's like you know you either take Try the risk go. and hope yeah. that like you go far enough that you know it's you know it's the little ed of the yeah of the, of the trailers exactly um or you know, you do something that's a little bit more well known, and you know, in this case, it didn't really work out for them. But mm -hmm. I agree as well. I think that it is nice to see Queens actually trying to shake some things up and, you know, not just go with the pack. So, mm -hmm. so I think the other thing that we got to talk about with regards to them is Alexis mm -hmm. <laughs> throwing them under the bus, which I don't know, maybe my favorite part of that was Jimbo going like, <laughs> like driving the bus in the back <laughs> oh, that was so fantastic and i think i mean honestly darian i think handled this so well mm -hmm. uh in terms of the reaction because i think your gut is to be like you bitch like that would be my reaction back to alexis <laughs> and she defended the concept said look uh, that we agreed on this this is what we decided to do uh but i just i thought i was really impressed with the way that darian handled it and also living for alexis going after them <laughs> this is why i love alexis michelle i'm unapologetically a, a stan of hers because she's just such good tv right there was no reason no reason at all you're gonna be in the bottom regardless so you right might yeah. as well make thing. it a moment you're gonna make it a moment you better work and i love that you know she was being as diplomatic quote unquote about it as possible right <laughs> where she's sitting there and she's like you know I, I did raise this and I'm mad at myself <laughs> yeah. for not being oh, more yeah. sure. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> she was like, she was very surgical throughout the, the <laughs> latter half of this uh, oh, episode man. and during the untucked. Like even the tone of her voice was just like so measured. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to speak like this because I don't want to be incendiary, but <laughs> I did say that I didn't like the concept. I did agree to it. But I didn't like it. And it was Darian 
who said that we should do this. And James and backed her up, but Darian. James, James was Darian. there too, but Darian <laughs> said that we should do this. And that's how oh. I feel about it. <laughs> and at the end of the day, I have no one to blame but myself after I've thrown Darian under the bus. <laughs> oh, yeah. I And the, my favorite part of the whole thing too was when she started by saying, I want to apologize. Yeah. <laughs> I want to apologize. I did not come up with a concept for this. <laughs> Like those two things are not congruent. Like, right. I was like, what? Who I want to apologize like... for this mediocre performance. What did he say in Untucked? He was like, I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm throwing you under the bus. And then Darian was like, well, no, you're not throwing me under the bus. You are like pushing you... me in front of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're just pushing me. <laughs> yeah. You're taking a step back while I'm in front of the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Oh, oh it's man. so good. Like, that's the thing. Like, I know people get so serious about these kind of shows and such. Mm -hmm. and, and like Alexis in particular, after, you know, Valentina's fans and such got a lot of hate. And so did Nina and all these people. But like, come on, the show would be so boring if you didn't have characters like her, you know, stirring a pot every once in a while. And the thing is, she can back it up with incredible talent. Mm -hmm. This this group in particular, I'm sorry, when they all got separated out, I thought to myself, that's going to be the winning group because mm -hmm. Alexis has won Snatch Game, Darian has done well with Reads and Funny, and uh, James is just hysterical. Like, they can create something good. Um, and I think, you know, if they had worked a little better on the concept as a team and storyboarded it out better, I think it literally could have been just magnificent. And they just fell short. Um, Honestly, like, I'm willing to give, because I'm not, like, the biggest Alexis Michelle fan, but I'm willing to give, like, the girls a lot more grace on, like, something like All Stars when there is a little bit more strategy involved. Like, totally. if it's, like, a regular season, you trying to throw your other, you know, teammates under the bus isn't really going to do much to save you. Like, you're mm -hmm. still going to be in the bottom. It is what it is. You better hope you can lip sync. But in All Stars, where, you know, it, literally there's a whole part of a competition that is about stating your case and, you know, yes, throwing your sisters under the bus. Like, mm -hmm. she did what she had to do. Like, I want y'all to know. I think it was not even so much just the judging panel, but it was, like, the rest of the girls. It was like, I didn't want to do this, but I was a team player, and we went ahead and did it. So if there's someone to blame for this concept, it is Darian because it was her concept not mine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i was living for alexis and jimbo's conversation where jimbo's like if not you what should i do and she's yeah. like <sighs> just fucking say darian girl like and she's like there's it. two yeah exactly but she, again she you know what she is she's that girl in your class that always is right about everything and has been called out on something and she's like mm. Let me just do the mental gymnastics to show you how I'm not wrong in this situation. <laughs> right, like, but say it diplomatically. Um, and I live for that. I think it's yeah. like every time that's been someone, even if they're the most annoying person to me, I do have like a moment where I sit back and I'm like, that is kind of fierce that you're like <sighs> doing that. I, I don't know. Oh, it's so funny. I, I am so I am good. in support a hundred percent. Like it's it's so entertaining to me. And this is Alexis has done this before, so I'm super happy that she's back for a round two. Uh keep keep causing drama. That's my mom asked me how the season was going, and I was like, the drag is good, but the mm -hmm. drama is bad better yeah and, I'm, really, I'm dying to know what's going on with heidi i need to know yes to know. okay so we had talked about this Amon. you and i talked about this last week when we get the preview for this coming week you know she's got drama what was the actual quote it was like she you has know, tea that'll tea burn the competition down exactly tea candy has said some stuff outside of the workroom like yep on and the so van back yeah we get yeah so we get another hint of this i'll have to stick around for it to come out so now i'm like oh my gosh i really want to know what i was also super excited about is the fact that in untucked you know she kind of like recants her moment of weakness from last week she's talking about look it was a yeah it was a moment of weakness it's what it was i'm better now i'm feeling better i just hope that doesn't get in the way of revealing the drop the drama yeah. like i want <laughs> It's like you look I, girl, oh, okay, so what happened? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm feeling like the preview for this week, I feel like she drops it. I think she drops the bomb because everybody seems to be really up in their feels, specifically mm. towards Heidi. Mm -hmm. And that makes me nervous about if she's in the bottom, does she go? Or are other queens like we better save her? Mm -hmm. Um, because I love Heidi and I think that she has been unfairly judged this well season. it's snatch game of love and i really how did she do with her snatch game who was she again i can't even remember i feel like she I, did okay right i don't remember i don't remember either i to up. be quite frank with you i 
I actually never completed season 12. I was so bored with it. I'm one of the really, few. yeah, that's fair. I'm in the and it was the pandemic as well, so I just kind of was like, Mwah. um, I, yeah, I never actually finished all the episodes of it, and I don't think I ever watched Snatch Game. Mm. Uh, Leslie Jones, mm, okay, Leslie, Jones. I have no memory of that. I don't remember that at all either. <laughs> That I don't remember well. Leslie Fry. Jones. She must have either. been safe then, because you would have remembered if she was week. really bad, and you would have remembered if she was really good. Right, because they did it early that season, mm. I think. Uh, I'm watching some clips. Okay, it's starting to come back to me, but I don't remember how well it was received. Okay. Mm. Interesting. I mean, I think she's the type of person who could do really well at Snatch Game. Like, yeah. I could yeah. see her excelling at that. She's a naturally funny person, unless she gets yeah. in her own head. That's, like, the biggest critique there. But also, you have a lot of queens who will do really well, right? Jimbo is going to do well, I assume. Lexis mm -hmm. Michelle is going to do well. I think James Mansfield could do really well. I agree. Mm -hmm. So then you're kind of <clears> looking <throat> at, like... I think Lala is a sleeper. I think Lala will do really well. Because she's somebody that we've seen the past couple of episodes, like, does have comedy chops, um, is, you know. She and should I, be Fat Albert shit. <laughs> <that is, laughs> yeah, she'd do a great job. That was something I thought about for um, for the, the Get Off Island thing was, what if they made them do a character that <laughs> they were going to do for Snatch Game? Like, maybe mm -hmm. not a smart thing to do? I don't know. But. Well, we'll see. Uh, yeah, she was safe. For the that episode, by the way, uh, hiding closet was safe in her. Original Gigi won game. that, right? Yes, Gigi won mm -hmm. it for the like robot thing. Sophia or Sophie, whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I know that. <laughs> I may not have watched <laughs> it. Oh. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah. So let let's finish up a few more things from this episode before we make some predictions, maybe for next week. So Jimbo ultimately ends up winning, as we talked about. James, Darian, and Alexis are all in the bottom, and for the lip sync this week, Chanel is back. Looks fantastic, mm -hmm. by the way. Has not aged. Uh, I was so excited to see. I I mean, I was also a little bit shocked, but also then I got excited about having her back on an All Star season. I was like, is this what this means? Is this what this means? If she's a lip sync assassin, is she going to be back on an All Star season? All Stars season? nine, baby. <laughs> I would uh, love to see it. I think she would wipe the floor. She was the original Alexis Michelle. Like a she would rush percent. these girls. I mean, she was the one who orchestrated her like vulnerability moment when her hat fell off. She did that on purpose to show that she was vulnerable but her vulnerable moment was orchestrated like you cannot give me anything better than that i would die if she were on all stars nine so she is the cross. original theater kid for sure oh she for truly sure. is and for the lip sync song we get bad reputation by joan jett and jimbo continues her streak of not being able to win a lip sync <laughs> yeah i mean that's one thing there's one thing i mean you might be um uh, the teacher's pet and rupaul's favorite but that's never going to stop you from losing these lip syncs. I'm not going to lie. I felt like it was kind of a draw of a mm. lip sync. I it didn't was definitely think... a stronger showing. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. It's two very different feels for the song, but neither mm -hmm. one of them were like completely outshining the other. I don't know. I felt like. I think towards the end, um, Chanel started to edge her out a little bit. Like I felt like the after the reveal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, because I think like Chanel had a little bit more of a progression, at least, especially mm -hmm. the reveal and then like the drop at the end. Whereas Jimbo just kind of walked around and did the same thing the whole yeah, time. That's what she does. Like, she's not a, like a lip syncer. She kind of just no. like, it's just like happy to be there the whole time and just yeah. is on this level. The <laughs> I'm going to win $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, yeah, I mean, I don't think that Jimbo did like exceptionally bad this time. No, Again, no. My, the bar is so low, didn't fall over anybody. That's like a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, it's not like Chanel like absolutely slaughtered her, like yeah. knocked yeah. it out of the park. But I do think ultimately I probably would have given it to Chanel over, yeah. uh, over, over Jimbo. Also, only to see the way that Chanel revealed the lip sync, like, the, or the lipstick, the way she held, she, so like most queens, they like hold it like here. They're just like, and Darian, she like held it with one hand, like straight out at the camera. And I don't know why that made me laugh so hard, but it was like, eh. take Darian. a look. <laughs> like a little kid excited to show you the rock that they found. Like, look at this. <laughs> I so thought funny. 
she was gonna throw it. I thought she was gonna like shot put like, <laughs> bah, like you know. Yeet. Yeet. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna uh, so, yeah, so that, the competition. That made me laugh. Um and ultimately, yes, Darian does get eliminated. And we see in Untucked, because they you they give you the vote reveal mm-hmm. that it was uh uh, a unanimous, unanimous. vote yeah. essentially darian mm-hmm. was the only one and sh- who returned the favor for james which i think when you just look at again the track record and the fact that the vote mm-hmm. was so close last week right so kasha mm-hmm. went home with only a five to four vote so s- complete split vote as close as you can get it yeah. i think it made sense if you would take those four votes and then compare it with you know james and alexis who hadn't been in the bottom yet i think it was pretty much a done deal it didn't really matter and there yeah. didn't really seem to be that much arguing or defense no. really it was just kind of like yeah okay this okay. is kind of yeah I, you know what give darren credit for trying to play the game with jimbo though like i would just i would reciprocate you might want to mm-hmm. be thinking about who is stronger competition and Honestly. try to keep those people around yeah, totally. i was like you better work like so many people come in and they're like so defeated or they spend the entire time being like, I just want to be here. I want to be here. I want to be It's like, well, everyone wants to be here. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, give us something more. That's like, make, make her think about it. Make it be like, I mean, like, look, like Alexis is strong competition. Do you want mm-hmm. her? So do you want her to be around? Like, yeah, I have been in the bottom now three times. It's not really looking great for me. I could be in the bottom again. You can send me home then. Why don't mm-hmm. you take the time now to get rid of a song? Mm-hmm. Listen, I will purposely do bad next week. Yeah. You can send me home then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and honestly, I think Jimbo from Canada versus the world or UK, UK versus whatever UK versus the world, whichever that season was. Mm-hmm. May have done it because yeah. she was willing to send. I mean, you know, she like pulled the big move, which ultimately ended up screwing her over. over. So I think, mm-hmm. and she talked about this in the beginning of the season that she's going to be a little bit more cautious with her decisions yeah. because it ended up screwing her over, which is a little bit unfortunate. Right. Because I would love to see more drama. But, Just do it know. again, bitch. Do, do it again. again. Go for it. <laughs> well, there might be no pangina this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, she she already came as a lip sync assassin, so you don't worry about her. Yeah, yeah. No, my favorite thing that came out of that season was when she and Lemon were at Roscoe's and they had talked about the moment where you know, the two of them are sitting down. Apparently they had filmed it and she was like, don't worry, Lemon, you're my sister. I'm never going to send you home. It's obviously the other person. And I guess production was like, all right, we need a little bit more like mystery <laughs> here. And so she was like, got it. And then that's where she turned to Lemon. She was like, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. <laughs> I might that's choose funny. your lipstick. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Because I remember, I remember watching that and being like, really? I guess Lemon? <laughs> <laughs> Lemon was like uh, telling that story. She was like, "Girl, you you're good. You know, you're safe with me. You're my sister." Blah blah. blah. <laughs> the producers were like, "No, no. Actually, no, no, no. we're gonna need a little bit more drama than that." She's like, "Oh, okay, got it." it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know. It's a big mystery. I could go a couple ways, you know. Um, what a good actress. All right, let's see what else happened in this episode. We, um, you know, in terms of going back to the whole Heidi of it all conversation, we do get another quote that I wrote down in this episode is that Heidi talks about the feeling of the judges not seeing her. So that is something that we are seeing at least a little bit for. So if your predictions are correct that next week we're going to pop off on that, I I would believe it. We've seen now the seeds for two episodes. So it kind of mm. makes sense in the drag race timing of everything right. that we would start to see something a little bit more with Heidi. I, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I was going to uh, just also say her very funny quote of, you got to hit him with the hymen. <laughs> <laughs> the, hymen. the hymen. The hymen. The hymen. You got to hit him with the hymen. <laughs> I've never, I, I want to know what hitting it with the hymen would even look like. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, it's not like hitting them, hitting them with the Heisman is a thing, right? No. Like, I think she meant like the Heisman pose. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know. But, like, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, you know, push them away, like keep my arms distance, whatever. But it's not like yeah. that's a. Th- I mean, I don't know. Maybe that phrasing is not a thing. Like, hit them with the Heisman. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, anyway, I don't. Sports, sports. You better believe I'm gonna be telling people I'm gonna hit them with the Heisman. Yeah, hit them with the Heisman. <laughs> <laughs> he that he doesn't. Oh, there can be my, my true friends. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> ridiculous 
Um, yeah, I mean, the other thing from Untucked, Darian versus Alexis, we kind of already covered that with, um, with their, <clears throat> you know, all of their kerfuffles. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately that drama is gone, but I'm not worried about it. I think with Snatch Game of Love too, Alexis won in her season. And so I feel like she's going to be out for blood and mm -hmm. they're going to do the Snatch Game of Love, which is where it's not the original Snatch Game. It's where you have the two groups. So there's eight queens. We're going to have four and four. Mm -hmm. makes sense where there's ultimately a winner from each group but depending on the sh the group choices i mean if you have alexis jimbo and james let's say all in one group together and maybe lala if you do think that she's a sleeper here i don't know if i'd say that but let's say she <laughs> is i mean you only ultimately have one winner from the group and i could see right. alexis causing some drama so i'm here for that yeah oh a thousand percent <laughs> all right anything else from this week we didn't go over the looks. I was just going to oh, say the looks. looks. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I actually even have them pulled up here. Okay. So, As the World Turns is the runway theme. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular looks that y'all want to mention? I first want to just show James's because mm -hmm. the moment she walked out, I was like, oh, girl. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I didn't I know who it was at first. When she wa when she rounded the corner, I was like, wait, who is that? And then it's a James. I was like, ah! Yeah. I'm just, like, James isn't, like, really, like, you know, super fun, amazing TV or anything. But, like, I'm still just so glad that she's here and that she's getting a chance to, like, redeem herself and show mm -hmm. more. Because, I, like I said at the beginning of this season, I just, I felt it. I just, when she went home first in season nine, I was like, oh, no, I feel like we're missing something special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... She has really been blossoming a lot on this season. So I'm just so glad that she's here. And this look is something that's different for her. So she's taking some risks and it's just, it's just fun to watch. Absolutely. No, mm -hmm. I thought this was great. Um, I love that she's uh, paying homage to her Mexican indigenous culture mm -hmm. um, as well. So I just like, you know, not something you expect from her, but something that is obviously very meaningful to her and fit the requirements very damn well because that ass looked good. So. Yes, ass that ass check her. ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, Beth, what about uh, what about Dar your girl Darian? This is the best Darian's ever looked on the show. Look at her. <laughs> okay, not gonna lie, when she did the the slowest booty drop of all time, it came up. I was like, that is me trying to do squats at the gym. Uh, I get it. when I do a goblet squat, and I'm like, oh, I gotta get back up. But thought she looked amazing. I loved that color concept on her with the red hair yeah. and the copper. Mm -hmm. Like I thought all of that looked really beautiful. Um, she I just love seeing the confidence after the weight loss and everything. It's like, girl, like I, I worked, I worked hard. Let me show my body a little bit. Yeah, like exactly. it just looks so good. It, it looks, looks so really good. great. Mm -hmm. I like, um, I like candies. Candies was like kind of like fun anime. We've seen that sort of like silhouette with like the pigtails before. I feel like we've seen Aja wear something Aja, similar to yep. that and yep. somebody else. Um, but somebody said it was the greatest look to ever come on a uh, drag race. And I, uh, call bullshit on that, but I, was like, I thought I it was know, good, all that, but it's fun. <laughs> also the butt is like, it's too high low back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's too high. I think especially with Jimbo coming out and having sort of a similar concept and having the butt in the right place. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that, but I mean, this is like super creative. This is really I, cool. I think if you lower the butt, it's amazing. So yeah. Yeah. I also think like, she had to have been sweating her ass off in that. I know. Because I it's think everything is everything. like. Oh. Yeah, oh, the God. cheeks just don't like match the legs. I just kept hearing um, <laughs> Jay Jolie in my head. Like, you know, the shade would be if them, if what did she say? Them thighs. Them don't shoulders match them match them don't match them hips. hips but, <laughs> but they don't, so. <laughs> um, I, I mean, Kahana. Ah. Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh. Yeah, the whole looked... outfit looked right from the from the front, and then I was sitting there being like, "Turn around, turn around, turn around, mm -hmm. turn around." Exactly, it, it, and it paid off because, like, you knew. Really I mean, that's the thing is, is that uh, I was like, there were going to be some cutouts, so I was like yeah. waiting for the yeah. cutouts. And Alexis, mm -hmm. we saw the first one, and then like, okay, and I liked Alexis's too because I thought she looked gorgeous from the front, but this one I was like, <laughs> mm -hmm. not RuPaul <laughs> saying you may now rim the bride. I was like, ew. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I did not man. consent to that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I got to pull up. Hold on. Let me put up, pull up Lala's because uh, we got to talk about the, uh, it was like the editors doing their damnedest to not show the 
the pat the what is what is that what is that so this is our butt what? it's like the different color on the yeah. padding oh. it's like a like a what do you call it like a stocking type it's deal. not even on the it's not actually the the stocking it's actually the whole back of that costume had that sh like that quote unquote nude fabric mm. there um so it's not even um her padding <laughs> It's a part of it's attached to this is part oh, no. this this different color for oh, the butt cheeks is yeah. attached. That, really? No, that that's her butt cheeks. That's her, that's her, her actual butt cheek. Ass. Oh, mm -hmm. that's her actual butt cheek. And then, oh, like, yeah, I the, guess that those two skin tones match. So this is like a cut. Oh, so that is attached to the red in the front, and so on the side you could see. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah i didn't know so quite bright. understand what i was looking at either at first too leon i was like oh okay but that's oh, okay so that's her ass okay there we go ah, yeah. it's okay. a little it's, it looks a little it. <laughs> it looks a little wonky yeah i mean again another commentary for i i'm sure that there's a lot of colorism within the uh world of yeah. fabrics and such uh to create a quote-unquote perfect nude illusion but at the same time like yeah Oh, I don't even care about that. That's not my problem. My problem is why would you have a cutout for your two ass cheeks? Fix this to the bottom of the coat and then just have oh, like a thousand percent. Like yes. I didn't I <laughs> is that or just cover the whole thing. Why are your little butt cheeks out? She, I don't know. Like I just said I, small I, booty pride. She was trying to show like you can have yeah, a little and that's booty, fine. You can a have small flat booty. You, and it's okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I that's that's fine. That's fine. I just like I don't um I don't like it. Yeah. No, no. I think I don't think it was the best done. I don't at like all. her ass. No. I don't <laughs> like it. Ass. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. I liked that Heidi's. Heidi's was sense clever. Now. A, a stripper Eeyore. I love oh my that. god. <laughs> Was yeah, I Stripper what was so ER. distracting was the nose ring uh, at the very top because I thought at first uh she missed some makeup like when she was coming down the wrong way. I was like, that's so weird that she would just miss makeup oh, right yeah. here. <laughs> and then I realized it was the nose ring, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, that makes much more sense. Yeah, I think um I think if she needed a little bit more purple, it's a little bit more gray than it is purple. Yeah, yeah. for the the color matching. Mm-hmm. But I also really love the concept. I think it's super creative. And I think for As the World Turns to yep. do like a sexy Eeyore is hilarious and yeah. super out of the box. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to give her her credit for that as well. A thousand percent. Okay. Any other lurks? I think we pretty much covered everything. Oh, yeah, Alexis was cute. Uh, Jessica Wilds was a little muted, I think. For maybe what it could have I can't been. Remember what hers was. I liked the little kiss. It was it was this one. Oh, and then she yeah. had the like kiss the lipstick oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah. her butt. I didn't Just yeah. in comparison with some of the other looks that came right. out, hers is yeah, a little bit more muted. Mm -hmm. But it was fine. I also agreed with Michelle with adding a little bit more color dimension to her face, like with a blush or contour or highlighter or something like that. Because yeah. as beautiful as she looks, she does need something more. I think because mm -hmm. she has very, <laughs> she has very dominant severe features and she makes them look so beautiful but i do think having like a little blush or contrast would just soften yeah. and highlight them a little bit just a little flat so to yeah. like put some dimensionality in there i think was good mm -hmm. and then yeah jimbo's is i think the only other one um that we didn't talk about with her at the end of the lip sync one of her um her boot tit booties or whatever it is um mm -hmm. <laughs> the nipple was starting to show <laughs> yeah it was it was <laughs> Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> That's great, though. I love that. It was um, so good. Yeah, and I, the colors are so pretty too. Mm -hmm. I love the sort of rainbow, Thousand but percent. very pastel rainbow color theme. Very cute. It's like anytime Jimbo is a part of a season, the tit ratio is just going to <laughs> increase astronomically. <laughs> exactly. Astronomically. Uh, astronomically. <laughs> All right. Now, have we covered everything? Anything else? Not for me. No, I think Perfect. I'm good. Okay. Let's close things out. Let's get out of here. As we said next week, Snatch Game of Love. I'm super excited. It's going to be a mess. Anyway, mm -hmm. we'll figure it out. And then, uh, yeah, that does it for us. So, Amon, where can people find you on social media? Is there anything else you want to plug? Nothing to plug right now. You can find me everywhere at Amon Adwin. And Beth, what about you? You can find me everywhere at Augusta Wind 11. And, yeah, that's pretty much what I've got going on. Perfect. You can find me on Twitter at Liana R H A P. We're closing out the Survivor season with our last B and B. We're going to be recording that today, and 
that's it for oh no i'm gonna be on hit it hit it or quit it we're doing some <laughs> like um hot wheels show Oh. I don't know. They said it was similar to Lego Masters. So I was like, sure, sign me up, fam. Let's do this. Uh, so I'll be on that as well. But that does it for us. If you want to leave your star ratings and reviews for us, you can do so. Uh, robhaswebsite.com slash drag race. Shout out to the whole RHAP team for all their help behind the scenes. And we'll talk to you all soon. Bye.